Yes, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Games Explained. Today, I am your host, Bridger, hello. We will be taking a look at Civilization IV, specifically a mod called Legends of Revolution, which adds a couple of interesting pieces to Civilization IV, but most of what we're going to be talking about here today applies to Civilization IV as a whole, and we're doing it because I am so excited about the Civ V expansion coming out next week, so excited that I will be streaming all day long on launch day, Tuesday, July 9th. If you guys want to check that out and see what the new expansion has to offer, go ahead and subscribe to the uh, Twitch.tv channel here, uh, Bridger15 on Twitch.tv, or go to the Sound Strategy Network YouTube channel. It'll also be live there. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait. So let's jump into this. Civilization Four, one of the crowning achievements of strategy gaming in the past 10 years. It, it's still incredibly fun. I have played this game for hundreds of hours, according to Steam, but let's see what we can get out of it right now. So... I'm going to play a custom game here, and I can go ahead and choose Julius Caesar because that's my favorite leader to play as. Each of the leader has a different, uh, each of the leaders has a different combination of two different traits, and we'll talk about those when we actually get into the game. Not going to play on Prince. We're going to play on Monarch at least. We got to be, you know, I can't, I can't do so badly. So let's talk first. One of the things that I like to take a look at when, when you start games like this is, well, if you don't know what's going on, how do you win the game? Winning the game is very important. I'm going to turn off these. The main methods that I usually play with, these are your military-type victories here. The difference between con conquest and domination, one is based on land area and population. The other one is based on actually wiping out everybody else on the map, if I recall correctly. Uh, domination is usually the one that comes first. Time is, after a certain number of turns, if you have the highest score, you win. That's kind of a lame victory, but if nobody else has won by that time, there's a problem. So we can turn that off. Cultural victory. If you can produce a certain amount of culture before anybody else, you win. And space race is if you can succeed to get to the highest level of technology as fast as possible, you win. So each of these is a different, there's basically like three major races happening simultaneously. And whoever can make it to the end of one of those racetracks first wins the game. That's the goal. So... Uh, we're going to play on normal speed so everybody can keep up with us, uh, and we're ready to go. Uh, we just hit launch. I've put it on Perfect World 2. It's a special uh, map uh, setup designed to uh, create a sort of realistic Earth-looking map with tectonic plates and all that stuff. Uh, and we are away. Marcus Aurelius is not an option, unfortunately, for my, uh, for my leader of Rome. No, I get Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar are the two leaders uh, so that is that is the only ones we op have this is options. Now, uh, the the mod here adds a couple of interesting things. One of the major fact functions that it serves is to provide a stability mechanic. If your empire is losing a war, if your economy is in the ter is in the tank, if other bad things are happening to you, uh, then your empire will become unstable, and you might have some civil wars break out, and that provides a lot more liveliness to the world of history. Things happen. There's empires that you might be at a war with and suddenly it will break into two pieces and the warring factions, one of them will make peace with you and help and ally with you to crush the other half. It's it's pretty awesome. Uh, so here we are. We are playing as the Romans who get the Forum as their specialty building, uh, which gives them, I believe, uh, minus 10% maintenance is the special thing that the Romans get with the with the Forum. They also get the Legionnaire in this particular mod, which is a stronger version of the Swordsman, which has bonuses to melee units. Now, we are playing as Julius Caesar, who gives plus one happiness per city. Uh, also, it is much easier for his units to uh, get promotions because they le require less XP to level up. And he gets extra happiness from monuments and broadcast towers. That's what the charismatic trait means. So every leader with the charismatic trait has that particular set of advantages. Then he also has the imperialistic trait. Now, I don't think there's a single other leader with a charismatic imperialistic combo. There might be one other out there somewhere. Then you can see uh, the other options. We have Constantine, actually, is an option in this mod, creative and enlightened, and then you have uh, Augustus Caesar organized and imperialistic. They all have their uh, own advantages, but we're playing as Julius Caesar, so let's see how that takes us. Uh, yeah, the sun rises over 4,000 BC, blah, blah, blah. Let's go. Here we are. So we've got our own little map here. We're starting as minor sieves. I've chosen to start as minor sieves in this particular one, which means we're automatically at war with every other civilization out there until we discover writing. 
then we can settle down and have a proper civilization. So what do we have here? We've got uh, some clams on the coast, which is going to give us some extra food. That's good. Gems here within reach of our capital, which is also very good. That's going to give us some money and happiness. People like their luxury resources. And then pigs are also going to give us some extra food. So this, as most very starting positions, is a good spot to build our first city, the city of Rome. And we can see also another resource over there. Anything that's like sort of singular on the map there like that is usually a special resource that you can take advantage of. Now, we've got an option. I think I'm going to want to build a work boat to take advantage of the clams. We've actually got two of them here. It will, uh, if you look down at the bottom left, the tooltip says once you put fishing boats on here, it increases the food production from two to four. It gets plus two. So because we are the Romans, we start with certain technologies, including fishing. Now, it looks like we're on the tip of either an island or some kind of uh, peninsula. This is a goody hut. This is a, something that rewards exploration. It kind of encourages you to go and, and explore the world because every time you find a goody hut, there's a chance that you'll get a technology or money or all kinds of different things. So you can see Rome, city on the seven hills right there. We got it. We're going. Uh, I'm moving around my warrior units to try and explore and find different things and lead the Roman Empire to history. Now here's our technology tree. This is the massive thing of doom, destiny, everything. There's technologies all the way through the ages, all the way up to the information age and fusion. Uh, so you can see if you want to win a, a science victory, you have to get up here and build uh, things that require like the SS thrusters for the, uh, for the space um, this, the SS casing for your spacecraft. You gotta launch your the first spacecraft to Alpha Centauri before anybody else does. So that's a long ways off. This is a, pa a set of paths that we can choose. Now eventually we're gonna want to get all of this. It's just a question of where do we put our priorities. If we put our priorities here in mysticism, we could potentially get religion, which is very important early on in the game to give you some extra happiness. Or we could try to go to bronze working, which let us chop down trees. That seems like it would be very important considering there are trees all around our capital. If we didn't have the ability to chop down trees, we'd be in a bit of trouble. However, the only other specialty resource that we have within range of our capital besides the clams is are these pigs. So animal husbandry would not necessarily be a bad idea because that will allow us to build pastures for those pigs and get uh, Rome growing much faster. So that's what we're going to start with. Foes, not their friends. That cities learn the lesson of building high and walls. Leonard Nimoy helping us learn about masonry. Because we explored the Goody Hut, we found another peoples who had eventually, apparently stumbled upon the special technology of masonry. We now have that technology, which allows us to build battering rams, uh, walls, aqueducts, the pyramids, the great lighthouse, and the great wall, as well as build a quarry on resources that we find in the map requiring said quarry. So let's go on to the next turn. Everything in here is turned based and uh, getting that masonry early is pretty nice that's a that's quite a few turns of research that we now do not have to put towards masonry now you can see we've got a small gap small maybe ocean or bay or something here between us and some other piece of land that actually has two different sugar deposits which are great for money and happiness so if we can it would not be a bad idea to try and get some colonists out there and build a new expansion to Rome in that area especially because we don't exactly have a lot of land around us do we I mean we've got this spit over here not really a lot of good places to expand into um, on the other hand, that means it's going to be much easier for us to deal with barbarians. There's not going to be that many barbarians near Rome because there's not enough land for them to spawn on, to be honest. Uh, I'm actually just going to chill right here with those warriors. The way that the barbarians uh, work in this game is that anytime there is a patch of land, and if you, I turn this on, you can see the, the map is made up into grid. Anytime there is a, a hex where no other player, including the AI players, can see anything in that hex. Like, they don't have vision. Because as you can see here, this unit can see everything here, but it can't see this hex. That's why it's a little darker. Can't see these three hexes. And nothing I have can see these three hexes. And if no other player can see those hexes, there's a chance every turn that a barbarian unit will spawn there and go around rampaging and rioting and looting and raiding uh, anything that it can find in civilization. Oh, God, and if you go into one of the goody huts, there's a chance you get the Gliven barbarians, Ivan. Ah, that was bad. Um, so 
there's a reason that you probably should build a scout early in the game, and that's because the scouts are much, much, much less likely to get barbarians, uh, to get the villagers angry at you such that they spawn barbarians. Oh, come on, guys. Hang in there. Oy! Oh, no! We've got barbarians blocking the only way off our little isthmus here. That's a problem. All right, so I gotta keep an eye out. If they start making my way, their way over to Rome, I have to reinforce Rome with the warriors here. Luckily, Rome is on a hill, which gives it a, a bonus in combat. They did, in fact, get paddled to death. Thank you, Selg. <laughs> All right, so we've trained a workboat in Rome. That's good. A barracks might not be a bad idea because uh, we've got those guys right there. But I think I'm going to look at... Oh, the pyramids is pretty useful, but look how many turns it would take us. 250 turns. That is literally half of the game. Now, why is that? We'll talk about that right now. Um, I'm going to tell it to build me a scout. And I am going to put our boat here in the clams. And let's take a look at the city screen. So the cities produce, at the very beginning of the game, three different things. Actually, cities produce only three things all game. Hammers, commerce, and... Um, well, no. Hammers, commerce which actually looks like this, it looks like these, and food. Hammers, commerce, and food. Those are the only things that a city will produce. You see in the tiles around the city, it's showing you the different combinations that any given hex will do. This hex is a mountain with forest on it, so it will give you three hammers for production. This hex is uh, plain open grassland with some pigs on it, so it will give you three food. Then the hex that has forest and grassland will give you two food and a hammer. The hex that has uh, grassland-based hills will give you a food and two hammers. So that is based on the terrain itself. Now you can improve the terrain with your workers to try and get a specific mix of resources. If you want one city to be focused on production for military reasons, for example, and another one to get lots of food so you can have uh, a lot of great people there. So there are, uh, the main way that you get any resources from the city is actually by having your units work the spaces. Now, this city has a population of one, which in this situation means a thousand. And uh, next turn, it's going to grow because it has 20 f uh, food and it needs 22 in order to grow. And right now we're gaining three food a turn. We have five food being produced, two here, three here, and we're eating two every turn because each population point eats two food. So you have to feed the population and have extra food left over to grow the population bigger over time. That's the idea behind the food metric. You have to balance your input, uh, uh, your production in the city, so that you have enough food income, and you're also going to want to get as much commerce as possible, and you're almost also going to get want to get as much uh, production as possible. So... Once you get commerce, commerce is sort of a mutable phrase. When you have income of some variety, it gets broken down into two things at the beginning of the game. Either science or money, gold. Literal tender, gold tender that you can spend. Throw in the treasury. And so you can change the percentage in how the mix is. Right now it's 50-50, which means I'm getting a total of nine gold, eight, sorry, eight commerce from the palace, one commerce from this center square being produced. You can see it right there. And the total is nine. So if I do a 50-50 split, I get four and a half research points and four and a half gold. And you can see up here, my total gold is 42 plus four gold. Right at the beginning of the game, science is very important. So we're going to max out and put all nine into science. Later on in the game, you can change your commerce in, uh, mix here into other things like espionage points and, and culture to try and wow your enemies. All right, that's enough about that. But you can see we're only making two hammers a turn. And let's see what happens when we get Rome just grew. Now you can see Rome has two population points. So in addition to the town center, which produces two food, two hammers, and a commerce, we now have two other population points, which are now, uh, you can see here and there. And I can actually manually arrange to put them wherever I want, but that's usually a poor thing to do. It's, a, it's annoying, especially when you have five cities to do all manually, try to find the most optimal thing. Instead, you go down to the bottom here, you click Turn on Citizen Automation, and it by default tries to have a mix 
of income. If the city's really small, it'll try to grow it as much as possible. If instead I want to tell it, focus on hammers, focus on production, it will still try to grow the city, but it will put a little more emphasis on production. If I tell it, avoid growth, it will and it'll t- take everything in its power to avoid growing. There's a couple of reasons to do that I'll talk about it later. Instead, I'll just leave it unbalanced. I want it to grow. It's got a good default balance. I could even say emphasize food if I wanted to later in the game. Now, we're going to have these guys turn into fishing boats. And just like that, watch this. It's going to go from roam eight turns to grow. Now it's going to be five turns to grow because this is now producing a lot more food with fishing boats added. Bam! Just like that. Moving on. And moving on. Sometimes at the beginning of the game you have to press a couple of turns. Hinduism has been founded in a distant land. The way that religions are founded is if you are the first one to get to the technology that unlocks it, you found it. So that means that somebody just got to polytheism uh, for the first time. Uh, Looks like Buddhism is probably going to be next on the list. Then Judaism is pretty quick. And then we have Christianity way over here. Islam over here. Taoism here. And there we go. Confucianism here. So if I can get a religion at some point, it would be fantastic because it gives you a lot more happiness uh, and options for extra science and other things and culture. Um, Wait a minute. Why does it say it will increase the... Oh, because there's no other actual civilizations out there. Duh. That's fine. We're starting as a minor sieve. Hmm. Okay. We've got animal husbandry. That's great. And now uh, we get to choose next. So if we look for, hmm, if we look for bronze working, that would allow us to cut down trees and it would reveal copper. Who's that? Ah, Sav is chilling in the the, the TeamSpeak channel here. Another option is to go for horseback riding and reveal uh, horses on the map. Oh, actually, Animal Husbandry already revealed horses. Let's get some... Hmm. Let's go for writing. But let's go pottery first. Pottery, agriculture, sailing, and writing. That would be a good combination of text to have early on. Just like that. We've got ourselves a scout. Now that we have a scout, I'm going to build a worker. Now, workers and settlers always take all the food and production together to build. So your your city will never grow when you're building a worker or building a settler. That's something to keep in mind. That's why I didn't build a worker right away, because I would not have been able to grow up to three population points by now. Wolves! Get them! Yes! Victory! All right, so now we have our scout here, but he's a little hes a little injured. He's 0.6 out of 1, so we're going to tell him to wait there until he can heal himself. He has a little bit every turn. So he's just going to hang tight and guard the area while he heals up. There we go. He's almost healed. Now he's healed. Push your shoulder to the wheel. Thank you, Leonard. All right, we're going to send the scout out. The scout's got two... Movement points, but anything moving through forest has to pretty much give all its all its movement in order to go through them. All right, we've got our worker. We can build a number of other things. I could try to start building the Great Wall, which would prevent barbarians from entering our borders on this continent, which is not a bad thing. Um, it's also suggesting I it's also suggesting that I build a settler. Another option would be pyramids, or a barracks, or walls, or a workboat. Let us build a warrior after we build some barracks. We're going to build a barracks, then later we'll build a warrior. Yeah, let's get sailing, archery, and then pottery. Because what I want to do is go and explore and try to get a settlement put down over there as soon as possible. There are many advantages... we got some horses here. There are many advantages to settling next to rivers, specifically. So that's something you might want to consider. Uh, We didn't settle directly next to a river because this was just so useful to have these gems here. Uh, If we had gone down to settle next to this, we would not have been able to mine the gems in in Rome, so we don't want to worry too much about that. 
So we're continuing to explore a little bit here. The barbarians seem to have cleared out. Boy, look at this. This is garbage. This big desert over here. Oh, good. There's an oasis in the middle of the desert. That makes me feel better about settling there. Not. So I'm going to have to be sort of a Mediterranean, just settle around the coasts here. It seems to be my only option at the moment. Oh, boy. So let's get sailing, bronze-working poetry, agriculture, writing. Because I forgot that I built this worker and he has no ability to cut down trees. He doesn't know how to work bronze at the moment. He does, in fact, know how to build a road, but he doesn't know how to cut down trees. Presumably, they just wind through the trees without cutting anything down. Ugh. No rivers to settle next to. There's a lot of advantages to settling next to a river. It gives you access to fresh water, which gives you some pretty significant benefits. Ooh, we found the Byzantine Empire. Now remember, we're both minor empires, which means we're automatically at war until we declare to be at peace. So we now have the ability to build galleons and things of that, or galleys, rather. So I don't know, I can't do anything else with my worker here until I get bronze working. So instead, I'm just going to have him build a road to the gems. Because you have to have a road network connecting your resources to your cities. We've built our warrior in Rome. We should now be able to build a galley to explore this little area over here. Our warrior, because I have a barracks in the city, comes with three experience points. And I am going to... I get the option of plus 10% strength, which is just generally stronger. Bonus to forest and jungle fighting or bonus to city attack. There's a lot of forest and jungle around us, so I'm going to take that option. Then I'm going to sort of put him on patrol out there. Let's see what we can find out about Constantinople here. Constantinople got an archer defending. So we're not going to be able to take that very easily. But uh, I'm guessing that... We're not going to be able to do much except just explore out here. So I'm just going to have my scout auto-explore, and if he finds any goody huts, he'll explore them for me. Oh, oh, stay away from me, Constantinople. We're just passing through. Just passing through, buddy. Luckily, there's a nice big desert between us, so I don't think he's going to be coming up here very much in order to uh, expose his will onto us. Let's see. Spices. Delicious. We got lions. Oh my. Okay. Ooh, we found a tundra type location. That's interesting. So one of the things this map script does, this is either the bottom, like the southern hemisphere towards the towards the south pole, which is would explain why we've got tundra here, or this might be a really high Himalaya type territory. The map script is designed to create like cold areas, even in the middle of continents, to represent high mountains. Now it's actually looking really like a great wall wouldn't be bad. It's only going to take us 13 turns. We are apparently building things so damn quickly. Moy statues wouldn't be bad either. That's really good for anything that's trying to uh, get production out of the water because it gives water tiles plus one. I don't, don't ask me how. I don't think anybody knows, really. Okay, let's get a great wall going here. Um, actually, mm, no, I really want to get that spot over there. So instead, I'm going to build warrior, warrior, settler, worker, and then, then we'll do great wall. If we can still get the great wall, it's a, it's a world wonder. So you're only allowed to ever have one of them in the entire world. If somebody else, uh, one other player, gets one, then uh, it, it, it's no longer available for me to build. All right. So let's take these guys, give them plus 10% strength, and get ready to send them over to explore. Oops. I went too far with my galley. Now he has to come back. Come back. So I'm going to put these guys in the galley and have the galley drop them off right here. Meanwhile, our workers have gone over to the gems. So let's get rid of that worker. We can send this worker across because right now we don't have... Ah, you know what? I will have to build a worker. 
Mm. There we go. All right, so in two turns, we'll be able to start chopping down trees and building mines on hills and things like that. We gotta watch out. We've got wolves here, but scouts have bonuses versus animals, so we might be okay. It does appear that that is the southern part of the map. Like, we, we it does not seem as if going further south will... You know, it, it's worth looking into. Because it will tell us where Constantinople is going to expand. If he can't expand south, that's an important thing to know. Oh boy. Okay, so Rome is upset. You can see here they are very unhappy because they fear for their safety. They don't have any military defending them, so that gives them plus two unhappy faces. They also have plus six unhappy faces based on the population. Each population point adds an unhappy face because the larger the city, the more things they that, that are needed in order to keep them happy. Now you get four happiness just by default based on the difficulty level. Your cities just automatically have four happiness. The palace over here is adding one happiness and because I am Caesar, I'm charismatic and that's why people are like, oh yeah, Caesar, yes, you're the man. So... Uh, that is how the happiness system works. It's a check on being able to simply grow your population in perpetuity. There are certain technologies that allow you to build things that increase your happiness over time. Uh, and so that sort of encourages your cities to not grow super fast because unhappy population, they still eat food. They just don't do anything. They sit here and refuse to work. They don't produce anything for you. So it's really bad. Um, so what we're going to do is, like I said, we're moving that warrior over there to satisfy their population. But we're also maxed out here. So I need to tell it to avoid growth. I cannot allow Rome to grow any bigger because if I do, they'll stay unhappy forever. So I need to keep them small. Rome cannot be allowed to expand. Yeah, I'm dead. It is entirely seemly for a young man killed in battle to lie mangled by the bronze. Blah, 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 whatever. In his death, so we have the ability to implement a new government civic called slavery. Why not, I say. The civics are located here. You can see there are uh, five categories, and they have new versions unlocked as you go down the categories. So I just unlocked slavery. Uh, you go from tribalism, which does basically nothing for you, to slavery, which, allow which gives instability uh, on your empire, and... It also allows you a major perk. You can sacrifice population to finish the production in a city. So if those barbarians are raging towards your capital and you absolutely need that archer to finish right the hell now, you can sacrifice some slaves and just make them into archers. So that's advantageous. Uh, the only other civic that we have that does anything right now is despotism, and it gives you massive penalties. You can't have a big empire as a despot. But if you can convince everybody that hereditary rule and, and divine right and, and, and kings are supposed to rule, then, you you know, there's there's less instability, and there is, uh, there, there's, there's more people willing to, to be happy with that whole system. Um, so this is interesting. That is a great spot. It is protected by these, this little mountain range here. It's got a, a corn resource right next to it. It's got pigs, and it's got two sugars. Uh, that is going to be like the super city right next to Rome. I'll turn on the things here so you guys can see what the different resources are if you can't make them out. Uh, but damn. So uh, Sa Sav wants to know what my, my religion of choice is. I don't actually usually go for a religion early on in the game. Um, because I usually play Rome, and there are a lot of civilizations that start with mysticism as their starting technology. Rome starts with mining and fishing. So if I went to try and get a religion, a lot of the other spiritual uh, type civilizations will probably beat me to it. However, I can usually get to Code of Laws before anybody else if I try hard enough. So that might be, because I'm going to go for writing, then alphabet, then Code of Laws, that might work. We shall see. In the meantime, I'm going to have my workers build a mine because right now my city can produce lots of food. It can produce four food here, six food down over here with the with the extra pen there for the pigs, but uh, not much population or not much production rather. So uh, that's what I'm working on right now, trying to get some more hammers. And this, this warrior is just going to wait there. We need to get the, the boat coming back here. 
Yes, this is a perfect spot for a city. Look at that. And what you see right here is called, in the civilization terms, the Fat Cross. The outline of this particular city is the maximum that any one city can work. It can work everything within two tiles except the tiles that are on the diagonal. So if we look in here, I can never, you can never work tiles that are two away diagonally, but any other tile that is two distance away from the city location can be worked by that city. So even though the borders of my empire are going to continue to grow over time, my city uh, will never be able to grow any further. Or, sorry, why my city will never be able to uh, actually utilize the territory any further out, is what I'm trying to say. Hmm. So, our scouts just got an upgrade. I think we want to make it Woodsman 1. Because they just managed to uh, level up, as it were. They can wait. Oh, we found a, a goody hut. Let's let's hope against all hopes that said goody hut does not contain more barbarians. It's like a, it's like a ninety percent chance of something good with with when you're not using a scout. So let's give it a shot. Fargan barbarians, seriously? <sighs> well, okay then. Hey, look, we've got ice flows. This is definitely the South Pole. Hang in there, warriors. Come on. You got this, Uniman! Whew! Good job, guys. We're gonna give them a bonus against melee units or archery units. One of those two is good. I think melee units to start with, and then we'll put them back here. This is gonna be a great new spot for our city. I can't wait. Meanwhile, I'm gonna send the settler, who is gonna start my next city. I'm gonna send that settler over to the boat so it can make its way across. The most cultured civilizations in the world. Justinian the Mediocre and Bridger the Hopeless. <laughs> Fantastic. Hath not the potter power over the clay to make one vessel unto honor and, and another, another unto, unto dishonor? dishonor? Very nice, very nice. So that gives us the all-important cottage. Cottage is a uh, an, an improvement that you can put on the map, much like mines, farms, or pastures. This one focuses on commerce. So if you want to build your economy, you need to build a bunch of cottages. Uh, that is the ideal uh, system, unless you want to build an economy out of specialists. But that is a more advanced thing that I don't usually go for. All right. We've got our workers. Or our... our uh, ooh, is this a little island? I don't even have to fight anybody for this. It just is. I think it is. There we've got our other worker. So let's send the worker over to our brand new island. In the meantime, let us build some more. I'd like to build a cottage somewhere, but there's no good spots for it. Yes, there is, right here. That way we get some more money income. Oh, there we go. Let's get send... No! No, that's not what I wanted to do. Ah, dang it. I wanted to click on him and put him there. Okay, so we're about to explore what might be the top of this little island here. It does look like it's an island. I don't have to fight anybody for it. Alright. New city. I declare you to be awesome. Bam. You are now awesome. So not only are we on fresh water right here, we've got pigs, we've got corn, we've got two sources of sugar and another plot that's directly adjacent to fresh water, which means that we can build something on there which will gain additional commerce for being on a river. Now, what do we build in this brand new city? Uh, granary, I guess. Um, that's not terrible. Now, there are two different types of terrain here. We've got forests, and we've got jungle. Jungle is a lot harder to cut through. We're going to need more than bronze working to cut through jungle. We're going to need iron working. So that's the next thing on our list after we get writing. We're not able to take advantage of the, uh, the sugar or the pigs until we get that iron working taken care of. All right, now we're going to send this around. And here we are, lo and behold, let's build ourselves a cottage. Plus one commerce. Oop, we have met somebody, the Vikings, the Viking Empire. 
so I don't know what to do with these barbarians. They'll just, you know, be chilling in the city, I guess, for now. Both of them will. Uh, mysticism wouldn't be terrible out of the line here, either. Okay, writing, then mysticism, because it's quick, then ironworking. Okay. These guys can go plant some corn. That'd be good. Now, things like these spices. We have some of those back at near our capital as well. Oh, I can't build a farm because... Why? Requires agriculture. Didn't I just... Am I not... Oh. Agriculture, then writing, then mysticism, then ironworking. So these guys can't build a farm because they don't know how. We know how to raise pigs, but not how to build a farm. Now they know how to build a farm. Bam. Hello. Yeah, we gave up Guild Wars 2. Team Legacy left Guild Wars 2 a while ago. Um, back in March, I think. All right. We're going around the little island here. We need a name for this island chat room. What do you think the, the name of the island? This should be the Island of Opportunity. Outset Island for you Zelda fans. Ooh, wine available here in the middle of the continent. Lots of good stuff. We've got uh, incense, always found in the damn desert. You can't get a good supply of incense anywhere outside the desert. Now, the problem with my little galley here is it's not seaworthy. I have to stay adjacent to a coast. There, the tiles are actually different. You can see the slightly darker tile here. That's ocean. And if I go over here, that's coast. Ocean, coast. So coast is within one tile of a coast, pretty much. Okay, so we've got our cottage. And what else can we build here? I think the only other things that we're going to build is... Uh, Actually, hang on. We do have these spices within our territory. However, we cannot actually build a plantation until we get access to Calendar. And we see here that Calendar is still a ways away. But we're going to put it on our list. It's number five now on our technology list. We'll get there. Meanwhile, what's our scout to do? Oh, run and explore directly into a bunch of barbarians. Come on, scout. You got this. You don't got this. Never mind. You're a terrible scout. <gasps> Ooh! The Great Wall. Now this might actually be really useful now that I think about it because uh, it prevents all barbarians from entering my borders. And with that huge desert region, nobody's going to want to settle there. So it's likely that a lot of barbarians will spawn in the desert and attack civilization. And so what that means is having a nice wall to protect us uh, will mean that all those barbarians go onto my closest enemy. I mean, um, opponent. Let's see. One, two... Three, four, five, six. Let's examine this city. There's seven sea tiles, so Moy statues wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if I want Rome to be my super productive city. Um, what other options are there? I mean, this city's not going to be good on the water. We've got fish out there. That would have been nice to take advantage of, but we can't. Let's go see if we can't find something... Maybe there's an island chain out here with some territory that we could settle. Because right now, it's not looking good. It's pretty grim, in fact. I think I might settle right here, though. That would give me access to those pigs. Here we go. We're building a mine. We finished our, our corn farm. We'll build a mine here as well. And when you build a mine or you improve a territory, it usually cuts down the trees in that territory, which gives a big lump sum of hammers to the closest city. The Isle of Disappointment. <laughs> Disappointment Isle. I am Bridger the Hopeless. This is true. Let's see. Writing. So we've got our writing. That's good. Uh, and 
Let's interrupt our Moy statues to build a library. It's only going to take seven turns. Moy statues are what's called a national wonder. And a national wonder means every civilization can only have one copy of it. So if somebody else builds Moy statues, I can still build my own. Uh, let's see. We should consult our revolution index. Antium here on... Uh, we need a name for the city here. We'll call it uh, Disappointment. Because the island wasn't bigger. I don't know if there's supposed to be two P's in there. Or two S's. I think it's just one each. Anyway, uh, you can see here, the revolt status is safe. The city's not going to go crazy yet. But it's worsening. It, the good things that prevent chaos and revolution are the fact that we have a high garrison here. There's a lot of happiness, and this city is 100% Roman. There's no other nationalities as part of this city, which can happen if you take over a city or if culture extends into your cities. Um, the other, the bad things, unfortunately, is it's a distant location. It's not anywhere near the capital. And as we mentioned, the despotism is a very unbalancing force. Slavery is an unbalancing force, and it's not connected to the capital at all. So, User left your channel. we've got a problem there. Uh, I don't know how many turns we have to fix it. We've got quite a few. And we'll be uh, researching some options to hopefully take advantage of that. Maybe if we go straight for monarchy, that will give us access to hereditary rule, which will fix a lot of that problem. So that's our number seven technology in a row now. We keep getting a lot of new things that we want to build but not a lot of ability to build them. Okay, so going south is a no plan because we've got an enemy directly down there. But what about north? Maybe we can find some place over here to settle. Otherwise, we're going to be really relegated to very few settlements, I think. We're going to need to figure out how to go into the ocean as soon as possible. But now we do have writing, so I might be able to convince the Vikings to not fight me anymore. Huh. Nope, they're still a minor civ. I can't actually be Nature friends with them yet. Has imprinted on the minds of all the idea of God. They have not researched writing. They are barbarians. So what do we do with these workers? I think Rome is just going to be this, like, massive producer of wonders because it's got so much production capability. Then again, so does disappointment. Yeah. A monument would give us extra happiness, which was needed for our growth. But a library would be even more useful right now because it would give us extra, well, not a lot of extra science, actually. Monument it is. We got seven turns away from iron working in which we can cut down these tree these these jungles and start doing something with it. As soon as we can cut down the jungles, we can get access to the gems here, which will give us money by the bucket loads, commerce rather. And if you look at here, we used to be exactly at zero. We were able to spend all of our science, all of our commerce, and turn it into science, but now we can't. Why is that? That is because once we have a second city, our buildings have uh, city maintenance. So you get maintenance based on the number of cities you have and the distance from the capital. So the further away they are, the harder it is to maintain your empire. So right now, we have a treasury of two, which means we cannot afford to put more than 80% of our money into research. As soon as the Moy statues are done... I still don't have the ability to build archers. Are you serious? Okay, archery's got to go in that list somewhere too then. Fine. Alright, a library... Still not going to be super useful. Neither was Settler. Ah, uh, alright. If you insist disappointment, you can try building the pyramids. I don't think it's going to work, but you can try. Seems likely that somebody else is going to get there first. Alright, Rome now is almost completely surrounded by mountains with mines on them. 
Ooh, here's a nice river exiting with some trees. Oh, but... Okay. That's not great. Uh, what else can we do? Rome can't grow. Let's build a monument. That'll only take two turns, and then we can turn off a void growth. That'll give us an extra population that we can use to build things. And down here... Oh, I see. We can't actually do anything here except chop down the trees because it's not our territory. Our, our border hasn't expanded because in order for it to expand, we have to produce culture. And we just built a monument. That's the only thing we have here that, uh, that will produce culture. So right now we are getting plus one culture per turn. And once we have achieved seven more culture, a total of ten, then we will have expanded the borders. These other civilizations are still minor civilizations. They are weak. They do not know the glory that is the Roman. Oh my god, it's a stink, stink city. Look at this. Oh no. It's stink lines. It's got stink lines. And they're unhappy. Oh, this is a travesty. We've got to build an aqueduct or something. I don't know... Don't I need masonry to build an aqueduct? No, I need construction to build, mathematics to build an aqueduct. Okay, but we got that on our list. That's number two. As soon as iron working is done. So our, our city is going to be a little stinktastic. You hammer your iron when it is glowing hot. And what that does is it's, it's utilized by the revolution engine. If your city is unhealthy, that penalizes the city's revolution revolt status. But it also basically the food spoils so it's harder to grow and feed a city that's unhealthy you can see we're getting bonuses from forests we're getting bonuses from the clams that we have access to uh, and we have uh, two from the difficulty level but we don't get a bonus two from being next to fresh water because we're not next to fresh water our, our people are laying in filth this is terrible the only thing we can do is build an aqueduct but we can't do that yet because we don't know how to construct them the Romans have not yet learned about mathematics. We found the Mayans, and we can actually explore their terrain because they are a minor civ, so we are at war with them. And I really am worried about somebody rolling in here with an army and taking me out. <laughs> I can't build anything because I don't have copper or iron. Now... We just revealed ironworking, which means iron just got revealed for the first time on the map. Is there any near us? Oh, there is! It's right next to Rome! We actually already have a source right there! Fantastic. And uh, these guys can just chill here for now until those borders expand. <laughs> I said you can chill there until the borders expand. Ooh, these guys have double gems. Both cities are Stinkville. Oh, no. All right, you just Z's for a while there. And we'll go exploring around the top here. So I think that's most of the systems in the game I've covered here. I talked about hammers, food, commerce, science, gold. We've talked about terrain and resources, buildings, and the tech tree. Uh, we haven't really shown combat yet. We'll get to that. We found the Mayan capital. He's got two cities, which are size 5. I've got a size 7 city here. And a size 5 city, which I can still let grow one more, because they've got a, uh, a monument there. The Moy statues have been complete. You can see we've got the little Easter Island heads there. So all my water tiles give plus 1 hammer. Ah, a granary will give us bonus health from corn, rice, and wheat problem is we can't yet connect these two via sea trade until when what do we need um a harbor oh seafaring allows trade on the coast that's what we need so we have sailing which allows trade on the rivers but we need seafaring in order to get trade on the coast that will allow us to get access to the corn 
potentially. Actually, nobody has access to the corn because right now the corn doesn't have a road leading to it. Neither does the iron, which is why we can't build any swordsmen. Ooh, the Vikings have finally stopped being a minor empire. They are mad at me because the war spoils our relationship and a first impression is a lasting one. Which is why they won't declare peace. That's a problem. They're angry at me because we're at war, but we're at war at war because we've always been at war. Um, not sure what I can do except maybe offer him some gold to go to peace. That might make him happier. All right, so let's make sure we can build some, some Roman legionnaires. There we go. Now we can get the corn shipped in to disappointment. We've got a granary in Rome. A lighthouse would give us actual uh, bonuses to our food production. Hmm. Another work boat wouldn't be bad because then we can get access to those extra clams. And uh, we've got the Arabian Empire here as well now. Oh, now we've got uh, legionnaires to build. Bingo. We finally got our iron connected to our trade network. There's the Arabians. And this disappointment's actually less smelly. They've got nice fresh corn. Huzzah! And they've expanded their borders. Everything's coming up Roman. Next up we got that. Keep exploring boat. Keep on exploring. And we can now build our cottage down here, which is going to give us the commerce we need to continue trying to get through the trek tree, tech tree as fast as possible. All right, we've got a legionnaire. Uh, let's build another one. I'm a bit concerned, you see. But we're going to go down here and build our city right next to the horses, which is another good thing to have. We're going to build a settler, and that should be that. A small revolt has taken place in disappointment. Oh, dear. This is bad. Disappointment is getting worse. Oh boy. Um, can we bribe them? We don't have enough money to bribe them. Uh-oh. Yeah, I know. I know that it's worsening. If in other sciences we should arrive at certainty without doubt and truth without error, um, it behooves us to place the foundations of knowledge in mathematics. Well... What else can we do here? Uh, we can't let them grow anymore. We've got to connect. Calendar is still so far away. Oh, I can't go through that guy. All right. Well, come back here then. We might need you to transmit troops over to the uh, to the island of disappointment because I think the people on disappointment are in fact disappointed. I desperately need all the things. All right, as soon as the settler is done, I need you to build the pyramids. Which I can't do because they're being built somewhere else. Damn it, disappointment. Why must you do all the things wrong? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Where's the sixth? The sixth is pissed. Because they're feeling rebellious? Ah, damn it all the hell. I can try to bribe them if I can come up with enough money fast enough. <gasps> no! My galley! How am I going to bring troops to disappointment? I've got a great spy? That's interesting. Okay. Because of the Great Wall. I forgot about that. A Golden Age! Perfect! Great people allow you to create a Golden Age which will hopefully calm disappointment. Because it's a golden age. How can you possibly be disappointed when we're in a golden age? Come on. It can't get that much worse. It's a golden age. We're producing more money. We're producing more of everything. All 
All right. Uh, what is this guy going to do? Come down here. And you need to finish building the pyramids, like, really quickly. That's why I'm cutting down trees. Because if I can cut down trees, the pyramids will build faster. Alright, what else do we need? Aqueduct! We can finally build an aqueduct in Rome, so they're not so smelly anymore. And we can build our third city. Which we will need to build a connection to. One of the reasons that, uh, that disappointment is pissed is that they can't... There's no connection to the capital. So let's get seafaring ASAP, then we'll get calendar. You guys just wait there. You'll defend the new city of... What are we going to call the new city? <gasps> the Vikings are playing hardball! Or no, those are the Byzantines. The Byzantines have settled right next to my pigs. Do they dare mess with my pigs? Mine? We're going to research all the culture in the world and smash them to pieces with our culture. Maybe also our legionnaires. But for now, we have a problem enough as it is with our money, so we're going to do it with the culture. The Hanging Gardens! That's perfect, because we need extra, extra, um, extra healthiness in this particular area. A small revolt has taken place, and god damn it, disappointment, it's a golden age! Why are you guys mad? All right, Love Usville is going to be pumping out all of the culture to make sure that those pigs stay in our borders. Ooh. Any second now, I just feel like disappointment is going to disappoint me. I can give him a 56 gold bribe. Okay. That might have staved it off until I can finish seafaring and make them happier. And maybe they'll even finish the pyramids in time. But you can adjust your sails. All right, so it's still improving. It's improving because now we have a connection to the capital. Woohoo! Oh, man. They almost declared themselves neutral and, and, and completely exploded. That would have been really bad for me. I should have got seafaring a long time ago in order to keep stability. Oh, the Mayans. Maybe the Mayans will want to make peace with us. Why does nobody want to make peace with me? You guys suck. All right, what about the Vikings? The Byzantines are actually the closest. I can't because they're still a minor empire. They suck. What if we were to give you... We can't give you gold because we don't even know how to trade gold because we don't have the thing called commerce yet. Never mind. You just do what you need to do and we'll sit here and wait. Um, and then let's get Lighthouse. There we go. A harbor will give us extra uh, healthiness as well. Things are going slightly better here. Rome has begun the production cap, become the production capital of the empire as it was foretold in the great prophets. Oh God, it's improving. That's good. See, it's slowly backing off every turn, but there's still a chance that some bad stuff's gonna happen right now. We still don't have any religion. It'll actually sort of make its way to us if we wind up having open borders and trading with somebody, which we can't do until they actually begin to like us a little bit. Currency. It's on my list now. No, you know what? We don't need their religion. We'll get our own religion. Here with the Code of Laws. Calendar, Code of Laws, that, that, currency, there we go. Bam! Tough actin's and actin. I am no longer the worst enemy of Saladin. Well, that's good. He still doesn't want peace. Nobody wants peace. They're jerks. Peace is for the weak, apparently. So let's see. Rome can actually stand to grow one more time because we now have, um... Oh, the gems are making us happy. 
And this city can also grow one more time. So we're going to turn off the avoid growth button. Aha! The Hanging Gardens, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Brilliant! Although Rome is not built on a desert, so... Probably won't need to... You know... Use all that brick. Pine palm trees. Anyway. Uh-oh. Justinian of the Byzantines thinks he can push me around. I just built the Hanging Gardens, you noob! You can't tell me what to do. What is this? The Sacred Band? Oh, I need a state religion order to build them. They're one of the legendary units in this game. And they haven't been built yet. Oh well. In the end, we'll have to just build a lot more legionnaires. No harbor for you. We still don't know how to build archers, by the way. Yeah, continue building your cottage. Oh no! Disappointment is still revolting! We just need to... We're just financial stability. That's good. We just need to get out of this hole. I can't bribe them because we bribed them too recently. They're not responding to bribes. Oh, dear. Listen, disappointment. If you just would wait for a moment. Ooh. Ooh. I can upgrade the unit to an Axeman. Bam. Cost a lot of money, but I did it. Regarding our worker... Ah, oh, we've got Calendar! Center Every of the world map. A season and a time Why do I gotta be on the frickin' side of the map? Look at this, I gotta, like... Uh, I'm on, like, the side of the world as far as this thing's concerned. That's jerk. Okay, well... Axeman? Here's, uh, let's take a look now at how this combat works, if you've never seen it before. So, the Axeman has a combat value of 4. However... It also has 50% bonus against melee units. And we've got some swordsmen here. Those are definitely melee units. Uh, I've also got a promotion here that gives a 20% bonus to jungle and forest attack uh, and defense. But if I hold down my right click, it shows me the chance of victory against the swordsmen. So, huh. They are at exactly six points. With no bonuses, I'm at 4 with a 50% bonus against melee units, which makes me 6. So I've got a 50-50 shot here. But it's worth it. Go! Oh, we lost. But the good news is, those swordsmen are now very weak. I have hurt them a lot. Instead of being 6 points of strength now, the best one is 4. So I can take this swordsman, who is my stronger unit anyway, instead of the axeman, who now has a 99% chance of victory. Victory! And now I can take this swordsman and also... Victory! Kill the other guy that was in the stall. Oh god, they've got more people coming! I need archers ASAP. Archery, and then... Oh, anything else, really. Ugh. Feudalism? <laughs> like, what? What can I do? Ugh. And then Code of Laws and hope that nobody else has gotten Confucianism. Because I would very much like to have the ability to build that sacred band. Those are pretty useful in the early game, but... Here we go. Uh, so, extra f strength, straight up. Because I'm trying to cut down these trees before the enemy gets here. Let's do that. Let's make sure the trees get cut down so they can't use it as a defensive bonus. All right, these guys survived combat, so they get a, uh, a, a, a level up here. I'm going to give them a bonus against melee units, because the enemy seems to be sending swordsmen against us. So that seems like a good plan to me. Hey, you know what? We've got a nice little bottleneck here. Let's throw our strong swordsmen into that bottleneck. And let's check on disappointment. Oh, jeez, it's still in the danger zone. Ugh. Why? Why, despotism? Why? It's one turn away from completing the pyramids. If it doesn't revolt this turn, we might be able to do something useful. Throw the arrow which will return against you. 
All right, we've built a legionnaire. Let's build an archer. There's the pyramids. They'd better be happy I spent all that freaking money and time and resources building the pyramids in their stupid little town. Come on now. Got that nice golden cap. That costs a lot. I could have put that on the hanging gardens, but I gave it to you guys in disappointment. And then I was disappointed. So now I have a really risky move to make. Um, I can make these guys happy. Whoa! Why did it go down so much? Did building the wonder actually do that? Huh. That's interesting. But, specifically, to make this go away forever, I can now change off of despotism, which gives you the huge penalties. And I can go to hereditary rule, which would give me more happiness, or representation is probably the best. Hereditary rule has less instability bonuses. Representation has stability bonuses. And... Three happiness in the five largest cities, three extra science per specialist. Universal suffrage is also really useful, but it's even more stable, and it gives plus one hammer per town, but I just don't have that many towns yet. Towns are what happens when your cottages expand over time. So we're going to have a small revolution and change over to the representative government that we are. We are going to fortify this location with the horses and force our enemy to stand on us. Or something. There, he's running away, you see? We win. Haha. -ha. Take that, knave. And now disappointment is much happier. For whatever reason, they didn't like slaving away on the pyramids. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Whew. Whatever it is, I am happy for. Build all the buildings, and maybe we'll build the mausoleum in Rome. Oops, I don't need to go there. That's the military advisor. And let's also go here. And currency wouldn't be terrible. But the main thing being, we need to get to code of laws so we can get Confucianism, so we can get some religion going on over here. There might be a religion Confucianism already made somewhere in the world. I just don't notice. Buddhism, hereditary rule. Has anybody got... Oh, Confucianism was already founded. So I can't race to Confucianism. What's my other option here? Taoism and philosophy? I think so. So let's get priesthood, then get to philosophy, literature, drama, in order to outculture our enemy in those few areas. We can also build pl plantations now, so we will be able to take advantage of this sugar. Meditation brings wisdom. Lack, Lack of, of meditation, meditation leads ignorance. ignorance. Know well what leads you forward and, and what, what holds, holds you, back. you back. Now we can build a plantation on this little whatever the hell that is. Spices? Spices is good. We'll put down some more military here. Build some plantation. That'll make everyone on our Entire empire happier with access to spices. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you Let's peace. Let's see if anybody wants peace. How about the Mayans? Will the Mayans accept peace? No. Byzantinians? Peace? No. Vikings? How about how about how about peace? Nobody wants peace. Well, I have to spread diplomacy by the sword. <gasps> Uh-oh. I am going to need to take a break from building that and build myself some triremes. Because we've got an enemy coming up, and if he gets over to my fishing boats, he's going to wipe the floor with them. I believe that is the correct term. Ooh, the Arabian Empire has had a violent revolution. Disorganized rebels has riven up... In, as the region declares into civil war, de de descends into civil war. Of 
great generals born all over the world. There we go. We've got our trireme now on patrol. Defending our crab fishing boats. That's got two cargo space. I gotta be worried about that if he's gonna try and drop something next to my city here. That would be a problem. In the meantime, we want to build a... Sentry patrol! There we go. Art, for art's sake, is an empty... You can tell this one comes from one of the expansions, because the they couldn't get uh, Leonard art Nimoy to do the voice. Beautiful. <laughs> that is the faith that I am searching for. Okay, so now we've got the ability to build the Parthenon, Statue of Zeus, or the Shwedagon Paya. Okay. Let's increase our research a little bit. There we go. So let's take a look at what Rome's doing here. Money, 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 money. Ooh, I gotta unlock Rome. It can grow now. It's got plenty of space. So does Disappointment. And it's much happier now that we have uh, representation. It's still unhappy that we have slavery and representation at the same time. Eh, but you can't win them all. So here's the problem. This is what I was trying to... This is what I was worried about. The stupid Byzantine Empire has control of my pigs! That's unacceptable. So we're going to have to push them back with our culture. That's why we're building... Well, we built some culture. We've got to continue building more. Okay, we've now got extra happiness coming from there. Uh, we've got pigs. Did we connect our pigs? I don't think we connected our pigs. We should connect our pigs. No, we never connected our pigs. Okay, well that, that should do then. That'll give us uh, extra healthiness in all of our cities here. <sighs> what about the Arabians? Come on. Oops, clicked the wrong button. Declare peace? Uh, yeah. Trireme coming around the bend here. That's a problem. Let's build another trireme just in case. There we go. Now people are less unhealthy because we've got pigs. I don't know how pigs... I mean, bacon is like the health conscious thing of the world, I guess. Hmm. Let's see. Join the city as a great spy and build more science. Sure. All right, I think I'm gonna save this game here and uh, pursue another endeavor for this evening. Save game. Hope that uh, explained it to you guys uh, as best as can be. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments there. I'll try to get to them. Thank you for guys for watching. Have a good one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, why not check out some of my others? And if you really enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. Thanks for watching. I am Bridger from Team Legacy and the Sound Strategy Network.